The Yamaha AG03 is a great little compact live mixer as well as stereo USB audio interface. It allows you to connect a microphone and a guitar or even line level inputs like keyboards and drum machines that you can use it to connect to your speakers for live performances as a standalone unit without any computer connections as well as having a built-in digital signal processing like 4-band EQ and compression as well as reverb. And also for your guitar, it comes with a great amp sim. Connecting it to your computer via USB allows you to record all your performance into your DAW. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate the audio routing available for the USB. What it means, like dry channel 1 and 2G, input mix as well as loopback, with audio demonstrations. When you have the routing switch set to dry channel 1 2G, it means the audio source from the microphone as well as the guitar are directly sent to the USB output as channel 1 for the microphone and channel 2 for the guitar. The signal is routed directly after the gain of the microphone into channel 1 and for the guitar straight after the gain button. So even though you might have the microphone fader all the way down or you might have the effects turned on, the signal sent to channel 1 of the USB or the left channel is not affected by these settings. This also applies to the guitar amp sim built into the unit. The dry guitar signal will be sent out to channel 2 or the right channel. And we can record this audio as two separate mono tracks, one for the microphone, one for the guitar, to later on mix. But at the same time, if we have our headphone connected to the unit and we are listening to it, both the microphone as well as the guitar will be heard in the center. And if we do apply the EQ and the compression, as well as the reverb effect for our microphone, as well as the guitar amp sim, we are able to listen to those on our headphones. But as I mentioned, everything that's recorded in our DAW is recorded dry signal. This is really great if we want to further edit our audio, recorded audio in our DAW and add our own EQ and compression and reverb for our vocal as well as a VSDI amp sim in our DAW. And to make things easy while we are recording, there is a monitor mute button that when we press it down, this mutes our speakers connected to the Yamaha AG03. That way we can track our vocals and our guitar without any feedback from our speakers, but we are still able to listen to them on our headphones right in the center. So let's have a look, a quick demonstration of how this works. I have a microphone that you are listening right now, connected to my Yamaha AG03, and that's how this demonstration is being recorded. And I do have a guitar sitting beside me that's connected to the guitar input, and the guitar inputs button is selected. To demonstrate, I've got Cakewalk by BandLab running. So let's select an empty project. So let's add three tracks. First one, I'm going to select as my left channel from coming from Yamaha Steinberg USB. I'm going to add the second one. This time I'm going to select the right one. And one more, just to demonstrate. This time I'm going to select the stereo. And my first track would be my microphone. Second one will be my guitar. And the third one will be the stereo. So it will be my microphone as well as my guitar on either channels. It's going to call it my guitar. Let's arm for recording. Okay, here we go. You can see on the first one, the microphone level is going up. 
And at the bottom one, you can see only one side of it is coming up, which is the left side. So let me turn on my guitar. It's a little bit buzzy. You should be able to hear. And I'm just going to strum it. Now, what you're hearing is exactly what I'm hearing in my headphones as well. But the microphone is in the center, and, and the guitar is in the center. But when we look at this track, the bottom one, the third track, my guitar, my vocal is on the left, and the guitar is on the right. Now, normally you don't have to record it this way. You should be able to record your microphone on one and guitar on the other. Now, let's apply some compression. And this is with compression. I made it drastic, so you should be able to hear some difference in my voice when the compression and EQ just come on. And I'm just going to turn on the reverb effect as well. And this is with the reverb effect. Let's turn those off. So let's start recording on all three channels. And this is my voice and this is the guitar being strummed at the same time. And here with compression coming on and here with reverb coming on as well as the guitar I'm strumming. Okay, let's turn the guitar off, let's turn the effects off and the compression on. So, as you can see, we now have three tracks. One, which is just my vocal, and the other one with just the guitar, and the third one is both my vocal and the guitar as one stereo track. But they are still separate on to the left and to the right. So let's have a quick listen. I'm just going to mute the last one because that is duplicate of these two. And this is my voice and this is the guitar being strummed at the same time. And here with compression coming on and here with reverb coming on as well as the guitar I'm strumming. Now as you heard right there on the playback, even though I mentioned that EQ and compression came on, we did not hear any different in our vocal. And when I mentioned reverb uh, is turned on, we did not hear any reverb. And that is the meaning of dry. That means all of the post-processing of uh, the digital signal processing within the unit is bypassed because we are now routing the audio directly from the microphone right after the gain knob into the USB. And same with the guitar, right after the gain button of high and low is being routed to our USB. And then the audio follows to the rest with DSP, uh, digital signal processing, as well as the amp sim, if we wanted to add in there, that will go out to our speakers as well as our headphones. Now at the same time you heard how because of my panning, because of my panning being at the center, we heard both of them at the center. So let's mute these two and turn the stereo on and let's have a listen now. And this is my voice and this is the guitar being strummed at the same time. And here with compression coming on and here with reverb coming on. And as you can hear there, even though the panning is in the middle, because we recorded the track as a stereo track being left and onto the right, they appear onto the left and onto the right. Our next audio routing option is input mix. Having input mix selected, it basically allows the audio routing output of the USB to connect to the main mix output of the mixer. And this is just before the main volume for our monitor output or speaker output. So even though we might have our speakers turned down all the way with our volume control, the signal will still go into our DAW. And this signal is the combined signal of our microphone, our guitar, 
or our line level input because we can only have either the guitar or the stereo line level input selected as our channel 2 or channel 2 3. This also means that all the effects we add, like EQ, compression, as well as reverb, and the guitar amp sim, will also be included in our audio signal going into our DAW. And we can treat this as a stereo signal going into our DAW. Our microphone and guitar are no longer separate channels. If you want to use our compression or our EQ or our reverb effect in our recording, we need to select Input Mix. Again, we can use our monitor mute button to mute the speakers as this will not affect the audio going into our DAW. So if we are a keyboard player and we have keyboards connected to our line level input with the right input selection at, of our channel, then we can record a stereo signal going into our DAW. So let's have a look at the practical example of how we can record input mix. Let's mute the last stereo, even though we could use that, but I'm just going to demonstrate it. Let's add a new track. This time we are going to select stereo because we are recording the stereo signal from our mixer. And we now have input mix selected. So now my vocal is coming on both left and right. Let me turn the guitar on and the Test that one as well. And the guitar strums really well there as well. So for this one, let's call it stereo. So let's record the signal. Here is my vocal, dry. And now I've added EQ and compression. And here we have a reverb. And on top of that, I'm going to start strumming my guitar to record my beautiful song. Okay, let's turn all of those off and turn the guitar off on the mixer. And let's have a listen to see what it actually sounds like. Here is my vocal, dry. And now I've added EQ and compression. And here we have a reverb. And on top of that, I'm going to start strumming my guitar to record my beautiful song. And there we go. That's an example what input mix will send to your DAW. And finally, the loopback setting. The loopback setting is very similar to the input mix. It basically is combining all of the inputs and sending out to the USB, but also it's combining the signal, the audio coming back from your DAW and mixing it with it as well. An example would be if you have a backing track that you are playing and then you sing on top of that backing track or as well as play the guitar and then you can record the combined signal in your DAW. This is also really great if you are live streaming and you have background music being played in from your computer, then it will add that to the output stream so that your audience can not only listen to your voice or your guitar, they can also listen to the background music being played. Again, all of the compression, EQ and reverb effects is also applied to the signal that's going into your DAW or your streaming software. So let's have a look at a quick example of this. For this quick example, let's add another track to make it easy to demonstrate. Again, we are going to select the stereo because it is a stereo signal coming from our mixer. And I'm going to call this Remix. And we can hear and see the audio coming through. And for this, I'm going to use my previously recorded guitar track and I'm going to speak over that and record as a new track. And this is my new vocal with reverb and guitar that I previously played. And here some EQ and compression. 
onto a new stereo track and I could be singing Right, let's have a quick listen to what I've just recorded. I'm just going to mute the original guitar. So we are listening only to this remix track. And this is my new vocal with reverb and guitar that I previously played. And here some EQ and compression onto a new stereo track. And I could be singing... So that's how versatile the Yamaha AG03 as well as the AG06 are with the audio routing option available through your SPI into your DAW. You can record a dry signal or the input mix signal as well as loopback as I just demonstrated. I hope this video demystifies some of the options and the questions I had on my series of videos on the Yamaha AG03. If you still have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music.